One of the key things, questions that is often raised uh, with Catholics who are concerned with the sacrament of confession, who have a lot of anxiety is, is why is it that I can't just confess my sins to God? Why is it that I have to go to a Catholic priest to confess my sins? Yeah, so the short answer to that is because Jesus said so. Yeah. He and he really did. I mean, it's, it's right in the Gospels, right? So Easter Sunday, this is, this is the day the Lord triumphs over sin and death, right? So Easter Sunday, John 20, starting in verse 19, that evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said, peace be with you, which is probably a very encouraging thing for the apostles to hear because they just betrayed him and denied him and he just got crucified. So mm -hmm. I would have been a little afraid if he showed up in the room risen from the dead anyway. Yeah. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, said again, peace be with you. And then he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. So the first thing the Lord does on Easter Sunday morning, the first gift he gives, is he gives the gift of his authority to the apostles to forgive sins. Now there's a pretty clear implication there. That the implication that is someone's going to be coming to them asking for forgiveness, yeah, right? right? So I totally get the hang up that people have because who wants to tell people about the things we've done wrong with our lives? Yeah. But isn't that what we do all the time? It's, it's, people go to confession every day. Yeah, they just don't go to a priest. At the bars. They go to everybody but us. Oprah. Yeah. Right? I mean, watch, Internet talk watch, rooms. Yeah, watch a TV talk show, watch late night TV, yep. watch a bar, look at Starbucks, look at go, girls out shopping. They're, we have this felt need to say, oh my gosh, Steve, you ain't going to believe what I did. I can't believe. I did yeah. this last night. We do this all the time. It's called the human no conscience, right? And yeah. it's something innate written on our hearts that if we've done something wrong, we've got to get it off of our chests, right. right, so to speak, and talk to another person who can then reverberate back how it is that we were wrong, right. what we can do to right that wrong. Yeah, because guilt is <clears throat> like pain. Yeah. Right? You know, so the, your body trying to take care of itself says, oh, my leg is killing me. Stop walking on it. So yeah. it gives me pain, huh? My soul has pain. The, the, the pain of my soul is guilt. That's a great image. The purpose of guilt is yeah. to get me to repent. The purpose of the pain is to stop walking on the leg that's broken. Right. Once the guilt is repented, now I'm not guilty anymore. So now here about guilt, I mean, oftentimes people have this huge hang up that the church is just harping on them about guilt, that they've done something wrong and that, that the church has just painted this picture that we're negative, that we're, that we're bad people. And so the church, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? What's your fee for confessions? Uh, I don't charge anything. I, I don't either. I don't think anybody does, actually. I think, no. the, I think a confessional is free no matter where you go. It, it is, yes. And yet... No disrespect at all. You and I send people to counselors all the time. I have great respect for psychologists and psychiatrists. They render tremendous service. Absolutely. But our rate is really competitive. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to see you again. Like We don't yeah. want repeat business, right. right? So the church isn't hung up on guilt. The church is hung up on getting rid of it. Yeah, forgiveness. Yeah. Right, God's forgiveness, you know. Christ breathed on the Holy, uh, breathed the Holy Spirit on his apostles and he said, peace be with you, right? And so he's given that authority, that peace to his priests, to his church, to bring the peace of forgiveness to his people. And that's what the church wants for us. Right. The church yeah. wants us to have the freedom that comes from knowing no matter what's in my past, no matter what's in my past, no abortion, yeah. adultery, murder, right. um, you name it, no matter how bad <clears throat> my past is, right. I have forgiveness available to me if I will truly repent, yeah, have a firm amendment to change my life, yeah. and, and do what I need to do in terms of restitution, right? If, you know, I can't just steal something and then just you know, repent right. and not actually pay somebody back. Yeah. That, yeah. That's an amazing gift that the church has given. It certainly is. Or has been given by Jesus. But now, oftentimes, so many people have this incredible fear about coming to confession, you know, and which is which is natural, right? You know, because we've wronged the Lord, we've wronged another. Oftentimes, we've harmed ourselves physically and, I'm and spiritually, and I'm embarrassed. I mean, right? I'm, and I'm more embarrassed about the fact that I've done something wrong yeah. than I've hurt the Lord. Right? All, yeah, very true. <laughs> I'm very more true. ashamed of that. Right. So, I mean, what do we say about that fear? You know, uh, it's just natural. 
You're yeah. not going to get over that. You know, I mean, who, who wants to tell people <coughs> the lousy things that I've done? Huh? Yeah. But would that I had that fear before I did the lousy things I did? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and here's the truth. You know, I've only been a priest now for close to seven months, and and I've heard absolutely everything under the sun, mm -hmm. absolutely under the sun, and um, and so many people are, are afraid when they come in, but after they've received the Lord's mercy, when they leave, there is that peace. So there's that peace of forgiveness that they're, that they're walking out of the confessional, forgiven and made whole again. I, I think I can say this in all sincerity. My life would have been worth living to have brought one person who was in mortal sin, by God's grace, back to His grace, and to see them walk into a confessional like this, slumped over, filled with guilt, and to leave standing upright, smiling, and knowing I am at peace again right. with God. My whole life would have been worth it just to have seen yeah, praise that God. one time. Yeah, praise Jesus. And, and, you know, people are afraid all the times that, you know, that they go to you and they go to me and then, oh, what's Father Steve going to think? Or what's, yeah. You know, God really does give us the gift of amnesia. Oh, my goodness, yes. And, no. and, and, and hard as it is maybe for some people to believe, but most sins, they just don't stand out. No. I mean, just as he said, seven months, he's heard it all, 17 years, heard it all. I mean, sin just kind of blends. The experience yeah. of hearing confessions is something like just taking garbage to the Lord and having him take it to the incinerator, yeah. and it's done. It's so liberating, not only for the penitent, but for us. The two things that I've noticed just in my, my time as a, as a young priest are everyone's a sinner, and, and most of us always are confessing the same things because you know we're we're tried and true and we're we're going to fall and but we got to keep coming back to the Lord and seeking His mercy. Right, and there's nothing right. wrong with that. I mean, thanks be to God, you're not confessing new things. Yeah, right. You know, one week I'm struggling with adultery, the next week I'm struggling with thieves, you know, or thievery. Right. I mean, you know, praise so many, God. So many people though are concerned with, oh, you know, I'm back here again confessing the same old things. No, you know, at least you're you're coming to the Lord, you're seeking His mercy. And, uh, and recognize that, that we're trying to, we're striving. And it humbles us, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and God loves the humble, and he opposes the proud. And, and I didn't go to confession for 10 years for mm -hmm. a lot of different reasons, but the main reason, I was proud. Yeah, right. And I, it, God did not, he was not um, pleased with how I was behaving because I was, I was not adopting a posture of humility. It was mm -hmm. obvious to anybody who was around me that I was a sinful man. Yeah. It was you know, no mistake yeah. to them. By and large, I wasn't living the life either of a, of a faithful Catholic. Though so, I was going to confession regularly, I certainly wasn't living it. So what would we say to people who are, you know, it's been 12 years or 25 years or six years, I don't even know what to do. Because a lot of us, that's our hang up. Like, I don't want to look like an idiot when I walk into the confessional. Yeah, right. You know, do I, do I do the old bless me father, I have sinned, it's been X number of months or years since my last confession? So what would you say to people who are afraid of coming to confession because they don't know what to do? Yeah, you know what, which is such a common thing. So many people are afraid, right, which we've just talked about. You know what, I think it would be a great idea that we walk over to the confessional and then just walk through what it is that people can do to help them ease their fear. Great idea. Hello, Father. Yes. Hi, I'm here for confession. Great. Welcome. Um, where do you want me? It's up to you. You can either sit if you're more comfortable with that, or you can kneel. I'll go ahead and sit. Great. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. How are you today? Good. Thank you. Good. Uh, a little nervous. I, I, have, I don't even know the last time I was at confession. Um, I don't even remember what to do. It's all right. I, I didn't go con to confession for 10 years myself. You just did the hardest part. You walked in. From here on, and it's it's actually really easy. I'll walk you through everything that you need to do. It just be uh, you get an approximate way of knowing how long it's been since you've been to confession. Wow. Are we talking about a year, six years, ten years? Probably seven, eight years. Oh, well, great. Welcome home. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm just gonna. Have you had a chance to examine your conscience? Have you done that? Um, a little bit. Okay. Um, not you know. A little bit. Okay, well, let me just give you a quick image that I find to be helpful, at least it was for me, because there's no way in seven and a half years that you're going to be able to remember all your sin. I didn't go for ten and there was not a chance of remembering all my sin, but what I was obliged to confess was everything that I could remember which was serious, and I knew it, and I freely did it. 
So the image I have for confession is it's kind of like taking a shower. So did you play sports? Yes. Probably football, right? Yeah. Okay, so did you ever break your hand? Yes, I did. Yeah, so when I broke my hand, it was wrapped up in one of those casts. I had to put it in a baggie when I went in the shower. I stuck my hand over here so it didn't get wet, which means it didn't get clean. So we're underneath the nozzle of his grace. So your task right now is to bring, just like you had to bring that hand under the nozzle of the water, bring everything that you can remember which was serious and that you freely did and that you knew was wrong, and you're going to walk out of here free. Okay, great. Sounds good. Well, my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee. And I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all because they offend thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, by the help of thy grace, to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. Amen. God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace. And I absolve you from all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord has freed you from your sins. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a great day. Thank you, Father. You too. Thank Thanks. you for being here. You're welcome. So we have a little bit of a feel of, of what it looks like to be in the confessional. Is there anything else that you think that we should add uh, on to? Yeah, this? you know, the, I, I think there's, it, it's important to stress two things happen in confession. We usually only stress one, that I get forgiveness, mm -hmm. which is obviously why I'm running to confession. Right. But with confession, as with every other sacrament, I get grace. What's grace? Grace is strength. And, and here maybe it's just important to remind ourselves, God made me and you to be great. He wants me to be great. Yes. I want to be great. You want to be great. We all want to be great. The reality is I can't be great on my own. I need help. We need God's I need grace. strength. Yeah. And so the sacraments, the way Peter Crave talks about these, these are ladders lowered down from heaven which pull us up. It's like nice getting image. plugged into the image. power grid. Yeah, right. Now I've got access to power. Who doesn't want more power? So that I can be the man I want to be. It's a great image for everyone to, to recognize that you know, we're forgiven, but we're strengthened by the Lord when we come to all of the sacraments. You know, they're that, that ladder that, that pulls us back up to the Lord. And so as we begin this season of Lent, as we go through these weeks that have begun now, especially for those of us who've been away from the sacrament, please come back. It doesn't matter where you go. Just come back. Experience the Lord's great love, His mercy, the cleansing that we get from knowing we're forgiven, and the power to become new men and women. We covered it pretty well. I think we just call it a night, right? <laughs> so Fulton Sheen has a joke. Um, I'll tell it anyway. His jokes are usually kind of cheesy. Uh, they, they are. I, I'm a big Fulton Sheen fan. You know that. His jokes are usually kind of cheesy. Um, but he had a joke. He, he says how, you know, it used to be that only Catholics believed in the Immaculate Conception. But now everyone thinks they're immaculately conceived. But it's, I mean, it's just, it's, he tells it to drive home the point, okay, we are all sinners. There's, there's, there's no one here that's not a sinner. Um, so let's pull out our catechisms. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1422. It's, it's right at the beginning uh, of, of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So yeah, 1422. Catechism of the Catholic Church. Those who approach the sacrament of penance obtain pardon from God's mercy for the offense committed against him and are at the same time reconciled with the church which they have wounded by their sins and which by charity, by example, and by prayer labors for their conversion. I was actually struck by that paragraph so you're you're you know put back in god's good graces um but the, ch the church reconciled with the church which they have wounded with their sins and which by charity by example and by prayer labors for their conversion the church labors for our conversion 
each and every one of us, we can all convert, no matter how times we've converted before, no matter how much we've turned toward the Lord, until we're perfect, we can keep turning toward the Lord. And, and the church labors for us to convert, each and every one of us. Let's see, what else do I have for you? Da, 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 da. Fourteen forty, paragraph fourteen forty. The sacrament of penance and reconciliation. Sin is before all else an offense against God. That's that's really important, and, and Father John mentioned it in the video. So often we're ashamed, like of ourselves, like I sinned. Oh, I'm I'm ashamed of my sin. We feel embarrassed. We feel dumb, and that's not wrong, but we've also offended God. Oftentimes we care more about us than we care about God. You know, that's, that's just one thing we're always working on. Okay. Sin is before all else. An offense against God, a rupture of communion with him. That's the nature of sin. That's the nature of sin is division, death, destruction. At the same time, it damages communion with the church, Holy Mother Church. For this reason, conversion entails both God's forgiveness and reconciliation with the church which are expressed and accomplished liturgically by the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. A quick note, sacrament of penance, sacrament of reconciliation, sacrament of confession, it's all the same sacrament. Um, over the years, it's been called many different things. I actually, my personal preference, this is just a personal preference, I like reconciliation, because that's kind of the whole thing. You get reconciled with God. Confession is part of it. Penance is part of it, but reconciliation is what like comes of it. So that's just that's my two cents worth. Let's go on to read fourteen fifty five and fourteen fifty six, the confession of sins. The confession or disclosure of sins, even from a simply human point of view, frees us and facilitates our reconciliation with others. That's what Father John, Father Steve were talking about. Like People make confessions all the time, just not to priests. But there's just something about us that we, we need to get it off our chest. Through such an admission, man looks squarely at the sins he is guilty of takes responsibility for them and thereby opens himself again to God and to the communion of the church in order to make a new future possible. Next paragraph. Confession to a priest is an essential part of the sacrament of penance. All mortal sins of which the penitent after a diligent self-examination of conscience must be recounted by them in confession. So this is, Father John mentioned that we do have to confess all of our sins we can remember that are grave, we knew they were grave, and we did them anyway. So it's grave matter, knowledge, we knew they were grave, and then we we're free. Excellent question. So what about confessing the same sin over and over again, where you, you actually want out of that sin, but you keep confessing it over and over again? Yeah, keep going to confession. Um, I've heard tremendous stories of, because it, it's, it's a tough thing, it's a sad thing, uh, when someone's like stuck in, in even a grave sin over and over again. There's, there's uh, a buddy of mine who, this is well before I was a priest, this is well before I knew him, but he was an addict, to, uh, alcohol and drugs, major problem, and yet, you know, he was trying to, like, get into his faith. And he would go to confession five or six times a week. And then finally he broke through. He's been sober for five years now. <coughs> You know, so yeah, you keep going, you keep going. I've, I've heard of stories where, you know, other similar stories where, where even the priest is getting a little bit like, wow, almost losing his faith in the sacrament of confession, and then there's a breakthrough. So yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. And God, we have an awesome God. We, we remember our sins. God doesn't. When we confess our sins, he destroys them. He doesn't remember them. We do. You know, so even if, you know, even if you go to confession five times in a week, every single time, it's new to God. He's not like, again? No, it's new to God. He's like, my child, thanks for coming. I forgive you. You know, I often tell people that we have a God who is all-loving and all-powerful. That's a pretty cool combination. All-loving, all-powerful. He can forgive 
anything, absolutely anything. Our worst sins are a drop in the ocean of his mercy. But there's a catch. There's a catch. There's always a catch. And the catch is we have free will. And God will not destroy our free will, and we can go into the philosophy of that and love and so on and so forth, but God will not destroy our free will. So we can freely give him our sins. He'll take them like that. Or we can freely hold on to them. Okay, so part of going to confession is actually being sorry. You know, um, you, know you, you do something horrendous, and then you go, oh, just, the church says it's wrong, I'll take it to confession. I'm not sorry at all. I don't plan on changing my ways. I'm going to go right to it, you know. Well, that, then you're not sorry. Then you're keeping that sin for yourself, and God can't reach in and, and take it from you. You haven't given it to you. Yeah, okay, yeah, 1452 and 1453. Those talk about the two types of contrition. So, okay. When it raises from a love by which God is loved above all else, contrition is called perfect. Okay, so... Perfect contrition, perfect contrition where you are truly sorry simply because it offends God. You almost, you almost wouldn't care if you went to hell because you're not even thinking about yourself. You just care about God. That's perfect contrition. Um, we're sinners. I don't know. I, I, I wonder if any of us are really there, myself included. You know, but okay, that's perfect contrition. Such contrition remits venial sins. It also obtains forgiveness of mortal sins if it includes the firm resolution to have recourse to the sacramental to sacramental confession as soon as possible okay so you know someone someone commits a mortal sin um, and then then dies right afterward you know uh, so this is this is basically like with with true contrition and like a true desire to I wish I could take this to confession I'm sorry Lord like yeah they they can be forgiven um, yeah and I, this is me thinking out loud but like I would think so I, I've questioned how possible it is to have perfect contrition, but God's grace is amazing, and at the moment of death, like, I would think you'd be getting filled with grace. He'd be helping you out. I don't know that for a fact, but I would think so. Okay, to move on to the next paragraph for imperfect contrition. The contrition called imperfect, or attrition, is also a gift of God, a prompting of the Holy Spirit. It is born of the consideration of sin's ugliness or the fear of eternal damnation and the other penalties threatening the sinner. Contrition of fear. So, so this is basically like, oh boy, I've seen the consequences of sin. I don't want that. Well, that's still kind of focused on self, but at the same time, it doesn't want sin. It's good to not want sin. It's contrition. You are sorry. How pure are your motives? Ah, eh, but you are sorry. Such a stirring of conscience can initiate an interior process which, under the prompting of grace, will be brought to completion by sacramental absolution. By itself, however, imperfect contrition cannot obtain the forgiveness of grave sins, but it disposes one to obtain forgiveness in the sacrament of penance. So what this means is that for confession, you only need imperfect contrition. Now, we should all be striving for perfect con contrition. We should all be striving to love God with our whole hearts. But most of us, I'd probably say all of us, are not there yet. So, so imperfect contrition is good enough for confession. I don't know what I'd do without it. Because, you know, people say, oh, can I just go to God? Well, you can. And what does he say? In the sacrament of confession, you hear... God, through the lips of the priest, but you hear God, I absolve you. That's the only time you audibly hear it. You know, so, so, so my, my quick thing is God's not trying to catch anyone. He's not trying to pull a technicality on anyone. I mean, like, the, the American Indians didn't know Jesus Christ. God's not like, ha, got you. You know, um, so yeah, it's, uh, how does the church put it? I forget exactly how the church words it as far as like the American Indians or, or anyone, basically what they don't know, he's not going to hold against them. So, so there is like, are they exposed to, have they heard of the Catholic Church? Have they heard, this is it, have they heard adequately of it? And adequately, phew, that's going to be different person to person. So you can't just, 
you know, look at someone and say, hmm, you've heard of the Catholic Church and you're not Catholic. You're going to hell. Well, no, it doesn't work that way. You know, there's so much going on in every person's soul and whether they've heard of it adequately, so on and so forth. Okay, so with a mortal sin, it needs to be grave. It needs, you have to know it and you have to be free to do it. So it's, in all honesty, it's tough to decipher, to parse out this is a mortal sin, this is a venial sin, because especially with the whole freedom thing, because it's really tough for me, the priest, to know your freedom. It can be tough for you to know your freedom, you know. So even even with a huge one like abortion, you know, people the way they get pushed into that, I really question their freedom, you know. So so how grave is that sin? I don't know. Maybe they don't know either, but God hears it. God can forgive big sins. He can forgive small sins. Just, just give it to God. Like each and every one of us are sinners. We are. And God forgives us. You know, so, so it's, it's, it's really about accepting our, our state that we are sinners, that we deserve hell. I deserve hell. And God died on the cross for me. His love is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I think, and this is, I guess this is a personal thought of mine, when people just try to explain all their sins away, they're almost like, well, I, I want to be good enough to get to heaven. I'll, this wasn't a sin, that wasn't a sin. I'm, I'm, I just want to be good enough to get to heaven. Okay, none of us are good enough to get to heaven. Like, like only God can take us to heaven. We are sinners. Admit it. Let him forgive you. Let him forgive you. When someone's rationalizing their sin away, well, Father, but this, this, and that, if you're rationalizing it away, why are you even bringing it in the first place? Just, just, Plead guilty. We're sinners. I've heard it all. Plead guilty. God forgives you. He does. He really does. That's my four cents. That's more than two cents. That's like four cents.